Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Fastscape. This is season three. This is episode number 15. This is part two of Infinite Possibilities. This episode is called Icarus Abides. So last episode, the title was about um, Daedalus and Daedalus is Icarus's father so I'm interested to see where they go with this because last episode Fairlaw came back and we learned that she had replicated that wormhole technology that John had gave her way back when created her own Farscape module to do flights to figure out how to use wormhole technology to their advantage basically I've no idea where we're going to go with this because Scarron's having wormhole technology is bad but not only that like the last thing we need is for John John to have his head messed with again because his head is so messed up already as it is and I just do not know where we're even going to go moving forward because there is so much happening. I'm just going to get straight on into this. Let's go. That's hardly sporting is it? <laughs> I should have a weapon as well. Don't. Oh Aaron. It's not. Easy. Being Easy. green? Hey. Putting a pulse blast in John Crichton. You're not John. Not up here, no. But the rest of his body's intact. Yeah. Be ashamed to support it with that. Oh my god. I'm much more reasonable than John is. He didn't want to share his mind with me. Stand clear. No, don't! It isn't John. It is John. What? Look, thank you, Daddy. The clone is dying. He wants you to shoot him, so John dies too. Oh! Officer Son. I thought Jack was Take dead! Time. Shoot. Quicker. A soldier must not be weak. That talks to what was her peace keeper in her. Hey. Hey, he's gone. Docking Bay 2 recently performed an atmosphere replenished as if it had been opened. But we landed the pod in Bay 1. Tell him! Seal all hatches! You better unlock that wormhole information inside my hand. Yeah. I just did. That's not good. No. Man, that one was closer. Who are you? Merely. Thomas traders seeking repairs for our ship. This is some sort of peacekeeper ship. Tell no lies. Are you a peacekeeper? I... What is your rank? I am. How did you get this ship? I will tell you. He stole it. Oh, go on, go get him, go get him. What happened? Yeah. What happened to you? Piece of shrapnel. Why are we still here? Where the ox is talent? Don't know the comms are still out. Here, I'll take over. No, no. You're still mobile. I'm not. Just bring me food. You want to eat now? Bring me food and I'll keep going. Jack, what the hell are we building? A displacement engine. Yeah, and whatever it is, we'll take out a scare and dreadnought. Yes. Shit. And then? What do you mean? I mean, how far are you going to take this? Is this the end, or are you going to try to put all the toothpaste back in the tube? Doubt that's possible. But you're going to give it the old college try, aren't you? Oh. You're going to kill me for love and Aaron. I do feel like Ancient Jack is up to something else. Furlow, don't worry, I haven't initiated the Martanium reaction yet. Uh-huh. When you do, just in case something goes wrong, where is the emergency shutdown control? There isn't one. You building a bomb here, Jack? Not at all. After 1.4 arms, the meltdown occurs and destroys the device. So, you only got one shot at whatever it is this thing does. That's yeah. That's all I should need. I'm launching soon. You're flying the module? Yes. Can't let you do that, Jack. Back Shit. off. Shit. 
This is the only chance we have to keep the Scarens from... From paying me a lot of money. Jack! Is that fellow killing those chariots? They snuck in. I nailed him, but... They got Jack. It's okay, Jack. I'll finish it. The best way to operate this ship is via a neural transponder. Look. Oh, 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 what is he doing? His socket. You see, his transponder was damaged, so we had to remove it. But the ship can construct a replacement. Uh, you will have the ship. Make one. For him. For me. For a low. Yeah. Can't trust her, John. so I don't have to twist my neck. This is a big mistake. Yeah. If you want to save your life, you're going to have to cooperate. Pistol. There's a scaring dreadnought on the way. Where are you going to go, Furlough? To meet him. To save my life. What are we missing? Fallow. What? What's that? John. Uh-huh. Cover us. Uh. You should have get while you had the chance. You should have done the right thing. Yes, should have. How well you know me? You think I like the Scarrets? They sent in the chariot, slaughtered my crew, tortured me. You think I faked all my wounds? Oh, my God. Turn around and walk away. I'd rather be dead, John. Too old to start over. Got nothing left. Furlow, I don't have time for this. Oh, you don't have time for anything. That dreadnought's coming. Then you shall have it. Tell him! Fire! I never thought I would see the day where Stark saved Chris. Casing's open, John. I can close it. Uh uh. It's too late already. The reaction's building too fast. Oh. I think we both better get out of here. It worked! It worked! Did it work? Crichton, Aaron, Chris, we got one shot at this. The uh, displacement engine will take out the Scarens. You need to pick up Sparky and get the hell out of here. Yes, Starburst immediately. It is unanimous. Oh. We stay. Ah, oh, damn it, Chris, knock it off. You're gonna make me start liking you. John, <laughs> are you hurt? No. What happened no, when he touched the thing? What happened? What did she do to you? No, she didn't do anything. What's the matter? She didn't. <laughs> what is the matter? Radiation. There has to be something you can do. Scarron Dreadnought. This is Captain Bialar Crace, peacekeeper. Approach any closer. Stan you actually looks quite proud of him. And destroyed. They must be terrified. Okay, displacement engine, time to displace. Garen Dreadnought, withhold your fire. We surrender, I repeat. We surrender. Don't think they care. Tell them. Stand down your weaponry. Make them believe. Draw them in. I've never heard her sound so scared in my life. I told you I'd come back. They say it's not good. Sparky, come here. <coughs> it will be hard not to think of you. I'm gonna miss you, Dominar. 
It's dark. For the pen. Gone. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, you never got to meet my dad. He <laughs> real I one. Dad. <sighs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, um, this was uh, crazy. I don't know what it is about Farscape and two-parters and three-parters, but they punch you in the gut and stab you in the heart at the same time. This was crazy to watch. Seeing fellow shoot and kill Ancient Jack was just horrible to see that she would go to that length for money. And then basically you're saying to John, look, are we going to be partners? We can sell this to whoever we want to sell it to. But then also being like, actually, I'm going to go to the Scarrens and basically beg for my life and try and work with those guys and the back and forth she was doing was unreal during this episode and I did not know like where she was going to end what position was she going to finally take and we saw she ran she ran she said she's the person that isn't the hero she's the one that runs away from the hero that's exactly what she did and because she ran away clearly i'm assuming we're probably going to see her again at some point because we know she's not dead that scene at the end where everyone was saying goodbye to john was really reminiscent of when everybody was saying goodbye to aaron when aaron died and that funeral scene broke me a lot. This was very similar and it was nice to see Chris showing his respect but John showing his respect to Chris as well because Chris really came through in this episode and he really felt like part of the team. The fact that Stark saved him and they came to like this common ground and then Chris saying he would make sure everybody on Talon was okay. It kind of felt like a closure between Chris and John. That was great to see because you could see that Chris was affected by John's sacrifice and John touching the machine and getting that radiation and just basically still going on with what had to be done because that's the kind of guy that he is. But I'm just so sad for Erin because she got to this stage where her and John were basically this solid unit and they were happy and they were even talking about going to Earth and knowing that she may never get that opportunity again is heartbreaking. But then all I've got at the back of my mind is what happens when we get to Moya? Because John's on Moya. So what the hell is going to happen? Because she's gone through this, but there's still a John around. And I don't know how she's going to react to that because the life she had with the John on Talon is not the life she's had with John on Moya. And I'm actually freaking out because I really do not know what the fallout is going to be. I thought there was going to be a huge fallout when Talon John got back onto Moya and he saw the relationship that they had and he was excluded from. This is going to be so much more worse. I may have to go watch the next episode. I will see you guys later. Thank you.